second speaker today is Jacob Sander Anderson of Solar Seal Apps. He's a CTO and has been co-founder of and CTO of Sciasil for 16 years. He holds an MSc in computer science since 2001. He's based in Copenhagen in Denmark and the title of his talk is Generating Bus Traffic Patterns. Over to you. Yeah, thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, as he said, as Mike said, I'm Jacob. Uh, I'm the CTO and we have been I've been working in Cyrocell for yeah, 16 years, uh, primarily uh, looking at uh, verification and um, in particular uh, formal verification and also uh, constrained random verification in the beginning using UV, uh, sorry, AVM and, um, and VMM, then of course transitioning into UVM at a later point. This work uh, is done with one of my employees called Kenneth Brandt and then also in, in uh, collaboration with uh, Lars Wiklund who is, uh, the title is uh, Expert Engineer at Access Communications uh, located in Lund in Sweden. Um, fundamentally, uh, we had a, a challenge in, in, uh, in, in the verification team uh, trying to um, to generate certain uh, traffic uh, patterns for a specific bus and uh, in short this means that as a verification engineer we were required to uh, apply a specific traffic pattern on a yeah on a bus like uh, the AMVA uh, the AMBA AXI uh, bus and this can be quite tricky if it's a very specific pattern so and the reasoning the rationale was that we had to uh, hit specific um, functional requirements related to, especially to performance. Uh, we needed to test that uh, we met a, spe uh, a specific uh, performance requirement uh, using a specific uh, traffic pattern. And then also, of course, if you need to have, uh, you know, uh, Close, uh, better closure of your verification. So, for instance, if you need to meet uh, metrics like structural coverage and so forth, then it can be quite handy. But the fundamental problem uh, for us was to hit a specific uh, performance uh, requirement on an AXI bus. And we, we, the 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 problem for us was to uh, get this um, this. Uh, Traffic pattern uh, specified in in a way that that we could implement it in uh, and and actually uh, apply it on the on the um, on the on the bus uh, in the test bench. We started out uh, having these verification workshops, uh, and <laughs> fundamentally, it was more or less like an interrogation of the designer, uh, where the you know. Uh, the verification you know, ask a lot of questions and take formal no uh, you can say informal notes uh, uh, just by jotting down uh, notes on a piece of paper uh, and then you go back and do does the implementation and then you either don't meet the requirement or you don't meet the pattern uh, the traffic pattern that you want to apply and then um, we tried to, uh, uh, you can say, improve this process a little bit by introducing uh, some kind of uh, transaction diagram in the second try, and this helped a bit. But what the designer said and so forth. So it, uh, it, it, it still required some work to actually do it completely uh, or exactly as the designer uh, speci specified or, or tried to specify. So the core problem uh, in real life was the communication uh, between the designer and the verification here. There was some kind of um, information loss, which then led, of course, to these uh, uh, incorrect implementations. And as a consequence of this, we had many iterations back and forth. Uh, and this, in general, you get a loss of productivity and you waste uh, both the verification engineer and the designer's time. Um, so we tried to think a little bit about that and our solution was to let the designer express the traffic pattern directly and accurately meaning that fundamentally you could have uh, if we go back to the um, uh, to this slide then uh, we could uh, let the designer teach him to define the tra tra uh, transaction diagrams uh, visually and then of course we could uh, translate that into code but we went um, we went another or you would say we we 
we tried to uh, to come up with a notation uh, for these traffic patterns. And then just before we we move on, there's a little uh, a little but wait slide here. Um, you could argue a little bit about that this is uh, this this starts to smell a little bit like PSS because you have uh, uh, transactions and you're trying to describe at a more abstract level uh, what transactions are and so forth uh, on a specific uh, bus uh, or interface. And the answer is yes and no. This uh, is a little, it's, I guess it's a, maybe a subset of PSS. Uh, in the long run, you could also turn this into PSS if you uh, uh, improved some of the things that I'm going to show you on the next slides. Uh, uh, I think where this is a little bit more specific is because we currently only target uh, very fine-grained control on transactions on a single interface. Uh, so this means that uh, we can, for instance, uh, specify that you need uh, to read from certain addresses one after another and have this many outstanding uh, requests on the AXI bus and so forth. Uh, for me, PSS uh, does not capture this uh, exactly, but uh, but I might be wrong. So there's a there, they are a little bit related, and I think this solution can be expanded into actually doing more probably the same as PSS uh, in the long run. Now, if we need to dig into this, we I think we are better off with an okay, example. So I have a very simple example here. Uh, you see a DUT with a memory and an interface connecting uh, to the memory. And this interface, uh, you can uh, actually do reads and writes. And inside the memory, you have two defined buffers, buff zero and buff one, uh, which means that uh, the hardware is, or the test bench, for instance, is capable of uh, accessing these, this memory uh, through the interface, uh, doing reads and writes uh, to specific addresses uh, inside this uh, memory. Assuming you have a set of uh, of producers, in this case, this could be, for instance, uh, three cores in, th in, a, in a CPU that try to access these uh, two buffers. Uh, then producer A uh, could try to read, uh, uh, perform reads to buff zero, and B could try to write to buff zero, and producer C uh, could try to write to buff one. Uh, they all, of course, have to go through the same interface. Uh, but there's this uh, caveat that uh, the, the last producer, producer C, uh, only uh, so this is a constraint it it must only start after producer a has done four transactions and if you look into the the um, lower right corner where you see this traffic pattern there is now an example of a uh, traffic pattern that fulfills this requirement so you can see that uh, you first get uh, a transaction through uh, a transaction accepted for the interface from uh, producer a the first one then the second one from producer a uh, one from producer b uh, then two more from uh, producer A, which means that producer A has now done four, and then the first uh, access from producer C can be uh, uh, allowed. So this is an example of of such a specific traffic pattern that you would like to uh, uh, that you would like to uh, apply on this bus. And of course, this means that uh, this is a very simplified example. In real life, it's of course much more complex. So the idea is that we would like to um, to make the designer able to specify traffic patterns uh, in a in a in a, uh, in, a in a specific or uh, strict way, so that that the underlying uh, implementation basically just uh, executes the the specification. As always, or not as always, but what we often do is that then we work with abstractions uh, because we need to uh, we need to be able to provide something for the designer that 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 he can work with. Um, if you look at the the diagram uh, on the right, uh, then you see an abstracted model of the of the um, of the example I just showed you. Uh, we see producer zero, producer one, and producer two instead of A, B, and C. And then fundamentally, there's just a big uh, cloud saying synchronization and scheduling, which is controlling uh, fundamentally which transaction uh, is applied uh, to the consumer, which is then the interface. 
Um, so this is an abstraction of what you just saw in, in the example. So fundamentally we can abstract this into a set of producers connecting to something, uh, in this case a cloud, that represents the synchronization and the sch scheduling uh, in between these producers. And uh, in this case, each producer then pro is producing transactions and the cloud is uh, trying to figure out which one should actually go to the consumer and in which order and so forth. Um, the next step is then to try to figure out what is, how, how would you um, make a realization of the, uh, of the actual cloud uh, and the producers. To do this, we invented something called a transaction sequence model, TSM, uh, which refines the producer-consumer model uh, into, into fundamentally two things. First of all, we replace the producers, which we call now transaction producers, uh, TPs, that will generate transactions when they're requested. So this, uh, this, this will... Uh, this is an entity that will uh, will act as a producer, and when it's when, when you request it to produce the next transaction, then then uh, then it will produce it. So in the case where we had producer uh, one uh, zero one and two, then you would have uh, three TPs to generate transactions, one from each of them. The cloud is then replaced with a transaction sequence graph, uh, which captures the synchronization. Uh, and scheduling in between uh, the different uh, transaction producers. Um, the graph is uh, comprised of um, a set of nodes where each node is uh, known as a transaction sequen sequence elements and then also some uh, schedulers that, that allows uh, to, to schedule over time, for instance, uh, load balancing and stuff like that. Like, uh, if you want uh, a certain uh, to hit a certain bandwidth over time or something like that for a producer. Um, and then, the actual bus traffic pattern at the consumer is then done by uh, uh, generating transactions uh, by traversing the the actual uh, transaction sequence graph. Meaning that when you have this system, you fundamentally you traverse the graph, and then it 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 the the the, the answer of traversing the graph is one transaction, that um, that that you, which you then can uh, apply at the at the consumer side, and then when you need the next transaction, you transverse tra traverse the graph again, and because you have all these. Uh, uh, you have represented your logic uh, cloud, the, the scheduling and the sequencing, all that stuff inside the the TS the TS graph. Then it will give you another or the next transaction element which would adhere to your requirements. Uh, that's the fundamental uh, uh, idea here. The um, the uh, the elements inside this graph. Uh, the TSEs, the transaction sequence elements. Uh, I give you some examples of this. So, for instance, you need to be able to request at a specific point in time when you evaluate the graph, you need to request a transaction from a given producer. So, a, this is known as a TST node. You also need sequencing. So, if you need multiple uh, things to be done in sequence, you need uh, the TSS node, which is sequencing the, the, uh, the, the nodes. You need TSP, which is the parallelism of uh, multiple uh, TSEs, potentially using a scheduler algorithm, so you can uh, choose, uh, maybe prioritize between the parallel threads uh, or uh, parts of the tree. And then you also need a, a, a repetition operator, which uh, is capable of uh, repeating, for instance, you need to do this four times or five times and so forth. The last one is also important, the TSW is you can actually wait for a Boolean expression to become true. So this is where your uh, ev evaluation of a certain branch in this tree can actually wait for something else. Now if you look at the um, uh, the TSM to the lower left or lower right here, uh, you can see there's this uh, red dot uh, everywhere where it says state. And this is because all of these elements in the graph, they can, they can uh, contain state. Um, so a state for any given uh, 
transaction sequence uh, node um, could, for instance, be that it, can, it, it, it always remembers the number of started transactions and the number of ended transactions. Um, and then you you can access these uh, function uh, these uh, these uh, these state elements. You can access this uh, through, uh, for instance, uh, a function like uh, which is uh, to the lower right, uh, ended uh, in. Then you can ask a question whether or not you have actually ended uh, this many uh, elements. So the 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 idea is that. Uh, besides you have the different nodes, each node also would have a state and each node would also have some kind of an API of accessing the state. And what you see here on the slides are, is of course the, the bare minimum. Uh, in the real life we have more uh, functions and, and, uh, and a bigger state, uh, so this can actually be extended uh, uh, if, if needed also to support other things. If we dig into what is uh, transaction uh, sequence node or TSE and transaction sequence expression then we take one closer look here on a uh, and uh, on the TSR operation and if you look in the uh, upper uh, upper right corner uh, you see a BNF notation for this TSR node so a TSR is a uh, yeah it can it, it Basically, it contains a TSE, so it could be any other transaction sequence, and then a number, a natural number. And this means that uh, when you use the TSR, it will repeat the, whatever TSE you have specified n number of times. Uh, if you look at the graph below, you can see that uh, it would have a state, and uh, time-wise, uh, it it would start at some point, the TSR, and in this case, it would. Uh, it needs to do the TS three times, so it would start and and end, uh, and then TS uh, three times, so one after another in sequence. And if you look at, for instance, the state variable or the 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 the, the function uh, that which is called terminated, uh, if you invoke this on the TSR before it started, uh, it was of course say it's zero because uh, it, or false or whatever you call it because it's not terminated. And while it's running, it's still not terminated, but after. Uh, it has uh, ended, uh, this function call would uh, return one instead because now it has been terminated. And to your left is another representation which is more, you can say, uh, functional like, uh, not uh, looking, uh, not, not, uh, w w uh, not, um, a BN, BNF like uh, where you have a specification of basically the same thing you have a, a TSR node which contain has need, you need to provide a TSE and then in the number of times it has to be uh, repeated where zero is uh, infinity uh, and then invoking this function would actually return a TSR node for you um, this means that for any um, for any of the I think it's yeah the, for any of the four uh, five sorry um, uh, TSE nodes different types of TST nodes we have here TST TSS TSP and so forth we have this kind of specification for all of them uh, so it's it's fairly uh, specified what it means to use uh, any kind of uh, node type at any kind of uh, situation so the next natural thing is that when you see this slide it's fundamentally divided into two things you have the more functional uh, specification to the left uh, or function oriented specification then you have the BNF uh, kind of specification to the right so in the implementation uh, the actual impl realization of this we have a choice to make should we actually uh, implement a DSL or not for this. So uh, the domain specific language which would capture this uh, uh, transaction sequence model. Um, the argument for not doing so directly is uh, of course then you need a scan and parser and you can potentially, you, which you need to maintain and so forth. What we did was that we actually specify what is known as the abstract syntax tree directly. Uh, using the functional, more functional oriented uh, approach. And this is also known as um, as EDSL or embedded DSL in, uh, if you need to look up the, uh, the uh, if you need to Google the, the terms or the uh, the stuff on, 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 on the internet. And the obvious benefit is that you actually skip the scanner and parser. Uh, so you don't really need to, 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 to have such a thing. Um, 
an example of what this looks like in uh, real life if you actually use the functional interface uh, then we have this slide which on the right you see I recaptured the producer A, B and C and the transactions and on the left we try to express uh, this the, the actual TSM uh, for capturing this uh, situation where you needed uh, uh, the, the producer C to wait until 4 uh, of uh, A was uh, had, had been applied. So from the top you need three different uh, transaction producers, uh, TP0, 1 and 2, and they produce 5, 3 and 5 uh, transactions each. Then if we skip the scheduler, uh, you need uh, some TST nodes that would actually uh, acquire the, uh, the, 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 the transaction from each of the, the transaction producers. And you need them to run uh, each each of the the, the TS, uh, T's they need to to run indefinitely, uh, or until they are or until uh, they they are done uh, with their own uh, with with the five three and five uh, transactions. Then if you go to the uh, to the to the line where it says the TSS uh, equals TSS, then you have um, in sequence you have a weight. Uh, and the TSR2 and TSR2 is the one uh, producing uh, transactions from uh, from from the from producer two, and the TSW you can see above uh, is a waiting uh, uh, is a wait expression which uh, basically waits for for TP0 for for the first producer A or zero uh, that it has ended four transactions and then it. When this uh, state occurs, or with this uh, with this event, you can say occurs, then it, then then it's not blocking anymore. Uh, and then the final one, the root of the the, the TSM, the transaction model, uh, is the is the is the last line where you put everything together. So you run all of them in parallel in a TSP node with a give with a scheduler which is has uh, even evenly weighted, and then you wait for all of the uh, repetition uh, nodes to be terminated. Uh, so the the TSP takes the scheduler, the set of uh, nodes it needs to execute in parallel, and then the termination criteria uh, for this parallel construction to end. Which means that the last uh, line uh, fundamentally uh, defines uh, a big, uh, or not a big, but a, a um, uh, a tree that you can traverse, which captures your uh, your requirement. Um, so this is an example of this uh, abstract syntax tree directly, which is uh, what the designer would uh, then uh, be able to specify uh, to to hit a certain uh, a, a certain bus pattern on on a, on a given bus, for instance, the Amber AXI. If we look into how uh, we actually realized this in, uh, or we in, how how we did the implementation for actually supporting this, uh, going from this specification then to something that actually worked in a UVM test bench. Then obviously we um, we needed something that could read in uh, an AST instance, uh, which in this case we call the generator. So this is a Python script that would read in this AST, uh, and then based on uh, you can say an AST base class library in Python. We would create the the graph, uh, the actual uh, uh, you know assemble the, the 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 graph from from the different types of nodes. And of course, this AST BCL is uh, is um, is reusable. So this could be used for any AST instance. And then once the um, the generator has read the AST instance, it would spit out a number of files. Um, First of all, it would spit out an AST instance, but in system Verilog. And this would, of course, also be done using uh, an AST uh, base class library, but in, in system Verilog instead. It would also spit out uh, a synchronization object, uh, which would contain the different synchronization mechanisms uh, that, that are used. So, so, for instance, the scheduler and so forth. And lastly, it would spit out, oh, not lastly, but uh, it would also spit out, sorry, a, a virtual sequence, which would boot the this, uh, so a UVM virtual uh, sequence, which will uh, start uh, this uh, test, you may call it. 
uh, and then also a reusable component in the uh, AST uh, traversing algorithm. So this is the part that the virtual sequence would kick off the the um, uh, the traversal of the tree, finding out what the next uh, transaction should be, and then once it has gotten the next transaction, it would apply it on the bus, and then uh, uh, it will require the next transactions and so forth, and then it will run until the end. Yes. Um, so, um, the tests which would then start this uh, virtual sequence, and it will uh, execute the transfer, uh, traversal algorithm and then fundamentally there are three outcomes of traversing this. It could say that I'm waiting, I cannot produce an AST uh, or a transaction at the moment because uh, we need to wait uh, for some other things inside the, the, the TSM. Uh, you can say yes, I'm ready, uh, I can produce the next transaction, here it is, or you could also say terminate, then I'm done for the day and then the sequence would terminate. Um, uh, so one after another, it will apply the, whenever you get it re ready, you also get a transaction, you would apply it on the bus. And the result should then be uh, a trace of the uh, requested traffic pattern being applied to the bus. If we go into conclusions, uh, then uh, we have actually managed to to define a portable and executable specification of traffic patterns. And the reason why I'm saying portable is if you go back here, you can see the red part is, of course, system Verilog, but this could, of course, be uh, replaced with system C instead if we wanted to. So in general, we have abstracted uh, ourselves away from the bus in general. So we could also generate system C if we wanted to to move in maybe into a TLM test bench instead of instead of uh, where we wanted to hit the same pattern uh, instead of uh, a UVM test bench. Um, I also think that using an EDSL removes significantly the maintenance burden because we don't have the scanner parser thing. And uh, the third bullet here saying that using a tree, tree traversal algorithm again, uh, you just need this tree traversal algorithm to be provided in the different target platforms and you can actually reuse the, 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 the whole framework. What I've shown you here is of course uh, restricted or constrained so that it's only handling uh, a single uh, consumer at the p at the moment, but you could of course uh, add a mul uh, support for multiple consumers, it could be easily extended in this way. Also, of course, now I've just shown you that we are waiting on after four transactions, but if you extend the state, you can actually uh, do load balancing and uh, other aspects, uh, for instance, of the number of tracks of transactions, maybe the amount of data uh, that you have transferred or any other metadata for that matter. Uh, you just need to extend the state uh, fundamentally so you have the information available. Thank you. I think that was it. We have, uh, we have one question from Bristol. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm uh, Paddy McCarthy. I'm a verification engineer. Um, I noticed um, well, I, the question is to do with your generation from your, I guess, executable, executable spec. Um, there could be more than one way of going, of traversing your AST tree. So multiple... Um, uh, sequ um, uh, transaction sequences that um, satisfy the spec from the designers. Um, do you have any randomization or do it, does it always generate a, a single um, um, series of transactions that follow the spec? Uh, no, there's uh, what, what I didn't talk about and, and also didn't show is that when you require the, uh, a, a transaction producer to produce a, um, a transaction, uh, I didn't, for instance, talk about uh, const constraining this so that it, for instance, uh, follow a, uh, you know, request a certain uh, series of addresses and so forth. So this is left uh, to be handled by normal UVM, cons uh, normal constraints on, on the sequence item itself, which means that, to answer your question, uh, the randomization lies in between when you request a, when you request a, uh, a, a, um, a transaction, when a tr transaction producer requests a transaction, it's more like, a, in the old days you would call it an atomic generator. 
uh, in VMM. So it requests a transaction. Whether or not you choose to randomize it or not, um, that is up to you, to the test bench, you can say. Okay, so, so there's, you're able to um, under-specify and then let the UVM fill in some of the details, are you? Yes, I mean, uh, in, in the, problem, the problem with extending this so that you would have constraints, um, uh, so that you, for instance, could use constraints uh, saying that uh, I would also like to specify that this transaction producer follows this traffic uh, or this address pattern, for instance. Uh, then we would open up for the discussion of uh, implement, re or re-implementing the constraint language inside, uh, inside here, and uh, we, we deferred from that uh, in the beginning uh, deliberately because uh, it would be uh, uh, quite a big thing. And how, how much effort or uh, do you think this has saved you or how many errors have been re re reduced or communication loops? Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's like with all initial things that the first time around you don't really actually save anything. So you see a problem, you fix it with this and then you, yes, of, but you spend all the time, you know, uh, understanding uh, your problem and trying to uh, come up with a solution that is generic and reusable. So the actual benefit is uh, in the in the aftermath, right, is when you start to deploying this to multiple test benches and situations and especially in our in our case, we actually also had. Uh, I don't know if 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 actually if Axis actually went and used it, but we also had uh, we also have a series of uh, TLM test benches. So uh, if you implemented the backend uh, targeting uh, system C TLM also, then then that could be um, that, that that's where the real benefit is. So in in in, I would say that if you had the tool available uh, and you look at you need to have multiple discussions with the designer and so forth. Uh, I would say you save, I don't know, uh, at least half the time, I would say. Okay. Okay. Because, yeah, if, yeah the last thing is that there, there might be, uh, I mean, one thing is that uh, you have this which is able to, capable of uh, actually producing a certain traffic pattern, but you need to either eyeball a waveform or something like We haven't built in uh, automatic coverage, for instance, in, into this so that you have actually have a proof that that you did what you requested. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have no more questions. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You're welcome.